welcome back to Dr. Noah's YouTube update on oxidative stress and NERF2 activator. So in this publication here, this was published uh, just last week, 7-23-2011, ooh, cutting edge, American College of Cardiology meeting in New Orleans, a couple papers there about oxidative stress helps predict risk of atrial fibrilla fibrillation. So it's a common type of heart problem like that where your heart's not working right, people, uh, once again, are you know, introduced to lots of very powerful, very expensive drugs, intervention, putting different pacemakers on like that. And then this article here is that measuring oxidative distress can help people predict the development of that. So we would actually measure or reduce it, but by reducing your oxidative distress, you reduce the chance of having this happen. We've talked about over and over again. After breathing, I mean, and if you do breathe, oxidative distress is a natural consequence of that. And so if that's not under control, lots of things, almost everything can then be, have a, a negative impact like that. So oxidative stress is very important. Another uh, article in American Journal of Medical Science, August, oh man, we're right into the future here, 2011, showing that uh, cardiovascular, uh, excuse me, uh, that heart, uh, cardiovascular heart disease is contributed exclusively, not exclusively, but very, very strongly with oxidative stress. And this was a symposium down in, I believe it was Louis, uh, Philadelphia, excuse me, uh, six papers about showing, and that just shows you the trend of oxidative distress. It's growing and growing more powerfully every second that we talk about. Even drug doctors are looking and saying, hey, man, I have to look at myself in the mirror. I can't keep prescribing like that Dr. Nassau says that, you know, SSRIs don't work and, you know, this doesn't work. It's very expensive. I need to at least look at myself and look at my children saying, hey, I tried to do something good for society instead of just making a buck. And they should six papers on oxidative distress and directly to lipid, protein, DNA, cell death, uh, different types of free radical type of formation, only from little places like uh, University of Alabama, Vanderbilt, George Washington University, U University of Austin, Tulane, all showing that oxidative stress is a very, very critical part and putting a lot of time and effort in there. So that's kind of exciting. Here in another article from the uh, Oregon State University published in Fertility, showing that infertility is related to oxidative stress, is that that has a leading factor in terms of what's happening. We now know, which is once again another sign, we already talked about pregnant women stroking out 40, you know, 40 plus percent uh, over the last you know, 10 years, uh, you know, people that can barely function anymore because of, we're so unhealthy. 30% of couples can't conceive. I mean, that's just I mean that's one of the basic principles of you know human beings and life forms is trying to uh, uh, repopulate and propagate and stuff. So they're really excited about looking into oxidative stress and and over the 30 years I've been in practice, great results on you know uh, people that have gone to spend 50 to 100 thousand dollars to infertility uh, treatments like that. You know, hey. So you can do that way, spend lots of money, but you're still sick, you know, it still doesn't make you any better. They just take your eggs and put the sperm together and put it back in your belly and then you're pregnant. I mean, how about making yourself healthy so that when you do have your children, you know, you constitute a good example like that. And the last one is anti uh, antioxidants are, are, um, are, uh, are dramatically uh, inhibit Alzheimer's, Journal of Neurotransmission. Uh, 2011, showing that antioxidants, once again, have every factor to play in terms of health and well-being. Now, as we've talked about uh, with Protandum and as a NERF2 activator, it has a direct influence on what's called P53, and that is called the um, guardian angel, because P53 goes through all your genes, especially the, the 600 survival genes, but all your genes like that, and if there's any broken DNA, and we've talked to reasons, you know, because of carcinogens and radiations and other factors that just makes that pre, uh, pre-cancerous uh, goes, either fixes or destroys it. So when the P53 is not, broken, not, not working right, cancer is a problem. And, that, and that's why here's a, this, this isn't a, a medical journal, this is a um, financial uh, publication that it's put out telling about this up and coming biotech drug company. Uh, this company, leading drug candidate represents major breakthrough in cancer research. That's not my writing. That's what they, because that's where the, that's where they're going, and they're able to work on this P53. Their their particular type of drug works on P53. Uh, they're, they're still doing some preliminary work, and you know they're excited because you know big people are basically supporting that. Uh, that one of the chief uh, doctors there is only the physicians in chief of, uh, from Harvard uh, University Cancer Center. So that shows you how these nerve two, especially protandum, working on P53 is such a powerful type of thing. Think, even if you don't feel benefit, 
Let's start thinking about being preventive and being proactive. Let's try to prevent all these things from happening versus, oh, well, it, I don't notice anything. You know, well, you know, okay, that's good. How about if you don't notice you don't get cancer? How about if you don't notice we talked about atrial fibrillation or a heart attack? How about you don't notice, you know, osteoarthritis? That would be a better approach to do. So that's how exciting this particular type of product. And we actually have research is showing uh, with skin cancer that Protandum, this nerve 2 uh, type of uh, activator, has a very profound effect on cancer due to the P53. So other, other people are looking at that very closely. There's a lot of excitement. Once again, this is their say, major breakthrough in cancer research with P53. Well, Protandum does that naturally. Uh, it's only $40 a month, which I'm sure this will cost, just like we've talked about, another compound uh, from Genentech that cost $10,000 a month and had no benefit there. So uh, I guess it's your choice because it's all our money to go in there. So talk to you soon. Thanks.